morning. Welcome to a work day in my life. It is a Thursday morning and it's time to get ready for the day. Today, I'm gonna take you along as I do my work for my creative agency called Creatorly Media. I've got a bunch of work to do in terms of batch working our content, like our marketing stuff. For next week, I gotta edit a podcast, edit a YouTube video, get the social content queued up and ready to go. I also have some admin stuff. I've gotta like write a proposal for a client, review some content from my team, lots of stuff to do. Ever since I rebranded from just trying to do this whole thing as like a personal brand, but with a team, to having creatorly media, I feel so much more like I'm getting up and like going to work rather than like I am work, if that makes any sense. Also, sorry, my toilet needs to be fixed. You can probably hear it running in the background, frick. So that feels good. I feel more like energized and like I have more balance in my life. Just having like that separation of church and state. It's like, okay, I have my life and I have my work and like I don't have to be on all the time. I don't really have any other plans for the day then work. Well, actually, that's not true. After work tonight, Dan and I are going to do a photo shoot with the van for our third anniversary, which is really exciting. Our anniversary is at the end of June, but this is just the timing that worked out and it'll be fun to have some like good pictures of VNG. So that's probably gonna be a big part of the day. Otherwise, hopefully I'll get a chance to do some reading, maybe go for a walk, We'll see where the day takes us. I feel like I've been really like struggling lately with seeing other people's lifestyles online and feeling kind of jealous and like, why aren't I living in a beautiful like old city in Europe? Or why aren't I running around New York City with a whole bunch of friends? And I've just decided that rather than, you know, spend so much time feeling jealous of what I don't have, I just need to start incorporating the different parts of like a lifestyle that I would want into my life right now. One of those things is like, you know what, I'd like to read more often. I wanna keep learning and keep um, developing my brain. So I'm gonna try to read every day and make a little bit of an event out of it, like maybe go to the park or like get myself a drink while I'm reading, like make it into sort of an activity. I also wanna keep up with learning French, which I like go back and forth on. So I'm gonna actually try to schedule that into my week. Um, try to bring my dream life to me rather than chasing it somewhere else. And maybe part of my dream life should be fixing that damn toilet. Okay, this whole time normally I would have like a mirror close up, so I've been doing this somewhat blind because the big mirror is blurry to me without my glasses. Let's do a reveal. Okay, yeah, good job. I think that looks good. All right, we've got a quick fit check. Just wearing my, you know, little flared jeans. And this top that I just got from H&M yesterday popped in there because I really wanted to get a tank top with this kind of neckline, very popular right now. And I looked when I was thrifting and I could not find such a shirt. So anyway, got it from H&M. Wearing some Ana Luisa jewelry. Not sponsored, but you know, your girl would take another deal. And uh, also when I was at H&M, I was trying to find like gold rings. So I really want to wear more rings to accessorize. And I was looking through the men's jewelry section. And you know, it's sad when even the large men's rings don't fit your fingers. So anyway, I think I might have to go to like a pawn shop with my friend Sarah sometime because she's had success finding real gold rings as accessories. And I just need to find, you know, some old mans who had bigger fingers than me. Okay, okay. <laughs> Something that I like to do when I start the workday, especially when I have a really big to-do list, which I kind of do most days, but definitely today I've got a bunch of things that throughout the week as I've thought of them, I've just kind of been like, oh, I'll do that on Thursday. Add that to the list. And 
it's feeling a little overwhelming. So what I've done is I go through and I highlight the absolutely essential stuff, the stuff where it's like, I don't wanna end my work day today without having completed this. So then I know that at least if I get those things done, I can feel good about that and I can follow up and do other stuff tomorrow or early next week if I have to. So that's kind of how I like to stay organized. I used to bullet journal and I do still use my bullet journal mostly for like jotting down ideas or kind of like proper journaling. Like sometimes I take notes on the books I'm reading or whatever, but in terms of keeping my life organized and like keeping my work organized, I use Notion. And it's just like a digital bullet journal basically. So I have like each day of the week a to-do list and then kind of a master list of everything I wanna get done in a week. And then I just sort of slot it over to my daily stuff. So hopefully I can get it all done. And that is the first essential item ticked off my to-do list today. So that's good. I was putting together a custom proposal for a potential client, which is always a little bit more time consuming, but usually very worth it because it means that we can create the exact kind of content that they need. That's awesome. And we can generally incorporate kind of custom packages into existing workflows to make it more efficient because that's really what it's all about. That's what I've learned as the, I guess, CEO of a social media marketing agency is like, it's all about having repeatable systems that we can do again and again. And that's what allows us to batch work and that's why we're able to offer like social media management at a cheaper rate than if you were to hire someone full time. It's because we're doing the same thing for a lot of people at once. And that's kind of what makes it more affordable, I guess. So anyway, I should probably go rinse this out before it becomes an artifact of our time and then I'll get back to answering emails. So it's been a productive morning. I've got two of my high priority things checked off the to-do list here. It's looking like a pretty small percentage of my overall to-do list though. So a little overwhelming, but that's okay. Gonna take a break for lunch now. My charming husband here in the background is making me lunch. So I'm gonna go eat and then we'll come back to it. Actually though, I just remembered, I'm gonna go and export my vlog, it's not really a vlog, it's a video for tomorrow, and I'm gonna export it over lunch because my laptop gets completely, the only thing I can focus on is exporting when I want to export a video. So I'm gonna do that while we break for lunch. Then this afternoon, I do have a discovery call with a potential client, and obviously wanna get done the rest of my batch content for next week and try to start working on some of my non-essential stuff. Okay, uh, we're gonna go eat lunch now. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're back at the desk again. Looks like I never left. Well, I barely do. So uh, unfortunately, my video is not done exporting yet, but I do have to either create some TikToks or curate some TikToks for my Instagram reels for next week. So I think so I think I'm gonna use this time to do a little bit of intentional scrolling and searching, maybe find like two or three TikToks from other people I can use and then like make two or three TikToks. So we'll see, um, that's what I'm gonna do now.
9.30, I just finished doing my YouTube edit for the Creatorly channel. It looks really nice outside, and the rest of the work that I have to do is mostly email and admin stuff, so I'm gonna go grab a nice coffee, walk to the park with my little blanket and my laptop, and we're gonna go work outside until the end of the day. And then I gotta come home, and then we have the photo shoot, so let's go. working outside it's so refreshing to be out here have a change of scenery maybe someday I'll start working in coffee shops more often again the Starbucks near my house that I used to love going to closed rip so anyway I feel like people wonder a lot like if I go to the park I just like sit here I do work I tether to my phone so that I have internet and I send emails and stuff like that so that's what I've been doing very similar to the van life vibe but Really, I should probably be saving my data because we're going on a big trip later. Though that's next month, so it should be okay. Anyway, I asked y'all on Instagram if you had any questions about what work in my life was like, and I thought that it'd take a couple minutes to answer some of them. Sasha asked, how are you finding the balance and creative capacity now with dividing your personal account and creatorly? Honestly, I was really nervous about this because I'm like, Katie, are you crazy? You're just giving yourself like a hundred times the amount of work to do. But I've actually felt so much more energized and excited about what I'm doing since I switched them. I think before I always felt like I had like this divided allegiance between trying to express myself and share the personal side of things, but then also try to focus on the business. And sometimes those are competing interests because what I want to create for YouTube right now that fulfills me personally is not necessarily helping me grow. Like, aka this video probably has less than a thousand views, but that's okay. But the stuff that helps my business grow is definitely not feeding my creative soul. So separating them a little bit allows me to be in business mode when I'm making stuff for Creatorly, aka the podcast, all of our Instagram stuff, our blog, our YouTube channel. And I know what the goal of that is. And I can just put myself in that mode and say, okay, I need to create a YouTube video that helps promote our services and performs well in search and all that stuff. And then when I'm thinking about my personal personal brand, I can say, what do I want to make that I find fulfilling, that I think is going to build a community that has similar interests to me? I can ask myself those questions that aren't so motivated by like revenue and lead generation and that kind of thing. And I know that some people balance those things really well but in a single brand, but it just wasn't working for me. So anyway, it's a lot of different work, but it is energizing to me and it's going well. And I think it allows me also to see a future where I can scale further. Like for instance, getting my team to contribute to the Creatorly YouTube channel. It wouldn't have really made sense to have multiple people all on the Katie Steckley channel. So anyway, it's going well. Mariana asks, were you a good student at school? What was your favorite subject? I was a very like goody two shoes. I mean, I will say when I was a young child, I was way too distractible and impatient to actually be good at school. But I think there came a point where I was ambitious enough and also driven by external validation enough that I became a really good student. So in university, I always maintained like an over 85% average. I, you know, got a few awards or whatever, not to flex, but I really didn't do much like cool stuff <laughs> when I was in university. I was just kind of lamenting the other day that I never went on exchange, even though I tried to. I like for a minute there was really set on trying to go to London um, for an exchange for a term, but that never happened. So anyway, I'm trying to give myself, uh, I don't know, adult gap year at some point. Someday I'll, I'll move somewhere else for a short time. But the answer to that question is yes, I was a good student, probably to the detriment of my other experiences at school. My favorite subject probably was my major, which was English. I really enjoyed taking like, especially historical literature classes and learning about linguistics 
found that super fascinating and maybe someday I'll become a writer. I don't know. That used to always be my ambition when I was younger and this is where I am now. So we'll see. Maybe I'll write a book someday. Last question before I get y'all bored and I should also get back to work. Becca asked, how did you know that starting your own business was what you wanted to do? I did a number of internships when I was in university and I felt a considerable amount of existential dread <laughs> working for someone else. And like, honestly, I always had my own side hustle. Like I would always have my own blog that I was working on. And you know, for a time um, I had an internship as an editorial assistant at a fashion magazine and I would like pitch ideas to the editors there and they'd get shot down and then I would literally go to my desk and when I ran out of work to do I would just write that story like for my own blog so I've always kind of had <laughs> something else going on to the point where I like couldn't feel fully motivated working for someone else I've always been interested in entrepreneurship and I definitely have a lot of like influences in my family to that extent my grandparents are business owners my mom is a business owner so I don't know I just always was excited about the idea of having my own business and I think I'd be kind of a bad employee but sometimes I also wonder am I even a good boss so I don't know <laughs> very last question because I think this is interesting and what is helpful I think for some people and this is from Haley shout out Haley I always see you in my DMs girl I appreciate your support so Haley asks how to keep going with no results or praise I think this is a really difficult thing on social media because obviously we want likes, we want subscribers, we want affirmation. Trust me, I want external validation, okay? So how do you keep going when you feel like you're not receiving that? Well, for many, many years, I hardly got any views on my YouTube channel, hardly had any subscribers, but I kept going because I just loved doing it. And I think that you really have to love making videos or taking photos or writing or whatever it is that you're creating. And you have to have a vision for like a long game and know that it just takes persistence. And I guess it's like having that hope for the future or like promise of like someday receiving that validation, but it is really hard. Um, so I think it's about trying to find satisfaction in the process and just like being happy with what you create, whether or not anybody else ever sees it. But that's tough. It's hard to kind of shift to that mindset especially after you're used to getting a lot of external validation. And that's the journey that I'm on right now because I'm used to getting views and comments on my YouTube videos. And now that it's kind of declined, we got to reset that mindset. We got to get to a point where it's like, I'm happy with how this vlog turned out because I feel like it's cute or well edited or whatever. And that is going to have to be enough for a while. And hopefully eventually I'll get more external validation again. Anyway, thanks for your cues. And I'm going to get back to work now. I'm home from the park now. We just had a quick bite of leftovers for supper. And now we're gonna go head out and pick up the van and go to our photo shoot with Jackie. I'm so excited. It's just about three years and a month ago that Jackie, who we're doing our photo shoot with tonight, shot our wedding pictures. Can you believe that, babe? Pretty three great. years you've been with me three now. Years. I'm carrying so much stuff because I want to have an outfit change and like props and stuff. I didn't want to wear these more than I had to. So we're just, we're here. We got all kinds of stuff that I'm going to load into the car and then eventually into the van. Everybody, this is Jackie. Jackie, Hello. this is everyone. <laughs> Jackie also has a YouTube channel <laughs> that I've been peer pressuring her into <laughs> making videos for for a while. That's but true. I'll get there. I'm getting there. I'll link it in the description if she lets me. I will. So Jackie, tonight mm -hmm. we're shooting an anniversary slash van photo shoot. Yeah. Is this your first van photo shoot? It is. That's very exciting. My first van photo shoot. Van life. It's like our family photo. Katie, Dan, and Van. Van <laughs> smile, Van smile. Vanji, hope you're enjoying this. And we're home. We had a really nice time with Jackie. I'm really excited to see how the photos turn out. If I happen to have some previews before I have to edit this video, 
I'll show them here. Otherwise, go follow me on Instagram and uh, you will see them in the coming weeks, I'm sure. Thanks for coming along on a work day with me. I feel really good about it. Honestly, I've had some pretty big ups and downs over the past like week or so. Sometimes just feeling really discouraged, really down on myself and like I'm not doing enough or working enough, but today was definitely an up on the roller coaster. So hopefully I can continue to find ways to regulate that a little bit more. Um, but I think stuff like getting outside, having a reasonable to-do list, all contributes to me having a good day. So thanks for coming along for a good day. Let me know in the comments how your day went. And uh, if you like seeing vlogs like this, because I really liked making it and uh, definitely want to keep making more. As always, I hope that you are having adventures and following your dreams. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.